Hello everyone and welcome back to Project Fern. I'm Danny and in this video we're going to be doing the rear axle on the Bilingo Multispace. Now I know that it's a very long video this but I'm just going to get it out of the way first off. It started off as a rear axle and then as I started working my way through the car I decided to replace a lot of parts that we're going to need replacing anyway. So in total we've replaced the rear axle, the rear shockers, rear brake shoes, rear wheel cylinders, We've also taken off any parts and brackets that are associated with all that. We've stripped them all down. We've rust treated them. We've then primed them and we've also sprayed them gloss black. Um, we've ended up putting a new back section and middle section of an exhaust on this car as well. And I've ended up doing some rust treatment underneath where there was a bit of surface rust. And I've also undersealed the whole back end of the car. Uh, the middle section of the car is like brand new. Um, so it, it is quite a long video. Please stick around till the end. Um, I take you through all the problems that I've come across doing the axle. Um, I've also covered, like no bolts come off easy or anything like that. It's it's not like it's a hard, hard thing to actually do. It's just when you get stuck into it, if you had a ramp, it'd be ideal. But doing it all on your back with limited tools, um, I've just had to plod on with it and do it as and when I can. And then obviously get the Vraxel done and get it all fixed. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this video today. Um, just a quick intro. I've obviously already done the video, but because it turned out being so long, I've done the intro when I've actually finished the car. Um, I've noticed that 80% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So please, if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and let's get on with today's video. We've got the new rear axle here. Um, I've ordered it from IM Axles. Um, ordered it one day, it came the next, um, dropped off super early in the morning. So thanks to them guys for getting one to me super quick. Um, link to them in the description below. They do um, refurbished and new axles for your Zara's, your Zara Picasso's, your Saxo's, your Blingo Multispaces a lot. Any, ones that, any of the cars that had this problem where the axles just give way, really. Um, I know you can um, refurbish them yourself and stuff, but... Um, I've not got the time or the patience to do anything like that or the tools so it's better to just buy a refurbished unit when I have done with my old unit I have to give them a call wrap it in bubble wrap like that and they'll come and collect it seeing as I'm going to be taking the rear hubs off the car I've got some new brake shoes I've also got some new wheel cylinders as well I may as well do that while I'm taking it all off um, to get to the back plates to swap everything over but we can get more into that in the video later on before you start on this job guys you're going to need something like this. It's a super long Torx 50. You have to go through the rear chassis leg on the new axle. I think that's what it's called anyway. I'll show you when we get to it. But it goes in about that far. It's over 100 mil, I think. So you're going to need a Torx 50 that's long enough and thin enough to get through the um, hole that's there to get to the bolt because this literally just goes through. I might have a problem getting through the um, refurbished unit if it's been powder coated I might just have to give it a bit of a knock through to get to the bolts to retighten them back up later but like I say let's get this car jacked up and you'll be able to see where the axles failed and the camera of the wheels has gone out first job is to get this car jacked up in the air um, I'll set the camera up now to see if you can see how the wheels um, straighten once it's up in the air but let's get it on axle stands get the front wheels chocked and then we can get underneath and start stripping it down that's the car jacked up in the air. I've not gone too high because I need the jack to be able to lift the new axle into place and it's not the highest lifting jack. I'm going to get the wheels off now and have a look at what we need to do to start um, stripping this axle down before we remove it. I've got the wheels off. It's going to be your standard stuff. We've got to disconnect brake pipes, handbrake cables, ABS sensor cables and underneath we're going to have to um, start to remove the back section of the exhaust but I'm just going to get underneath the car now and show you um, how clean it is and what little areas you need to look out for I've took the spare wheel off so you can have a look but I don't know if you can see just there it's getting a bit bubbly same there if I just spin round now we show you underneath but apart from that like this car's super clean underneath um, just your usual surface rust really, nothing uh, too major or scary, everything's uh, in pretty decent nick for a 16, 17 year old car. I'll show you what it's like further down as well. So this is the car underneath, 
It's like brand new. I wish the old forwards were like this. Yeah, no rust whatsoever. No, not even any surface rust. It's crazy. Right, um, it's job stop for today, unfortunately. Uh, I can't get this exhaust. Uh, well, I can get this exhaust couple, coupling bolt off, clamp, whatever you want to call it. But the problem is, is I need to drive this car home. Um, so I can't actually do it today because it means that I won't be able to put the exhaust and get it back on the road. I've noticed that if you look down there on the middle section of the exhaust, um, the mounting brackets um, corroded off, which is a common thing on the Citroëns. Um, we've also got this bracket that looks like it's seen better days as well on the um, tailpipe of the exhaust. So I'm probably going to get a new... Um, back box for the car get a new clamp i can get that welded when it goes in for its mot so i'm just going to job stop it today and get these bits ordered right guys we're pretty much at the same point now where we were the other day i've ordered a new back box for the car i've also got a new exhaust clamp because i'm going to have to probably cut the other one off and my dad's giving me a heat lamp so i can start heating things up at the unit and uh, maybe get things off a little bit easier I've also invested in one of them, it folds up into a chair as well, just to save me back, stop me from crawling around on the floor. So I'm going to get back underneath now and um, try and get that exhaust off. So just to recap, that was the um, exhaust clamp that was stuck. I don't know if they're just one time use or it's just got old and corroded and it won't release. And the bracket on the exhaust back box has also corroded and started to corrode through the actual exhaust. So for what it costs, I think it was about £35 for a new back box. I'd rather just put a new one on. I'm going to try and save that clamp because it was quite cheap for the middle section as well because that bracket down there, the welder's gone on it. So I'd like to ideally change that as well. But the main goal for today is to actually just get this um, rear axle actually done. So I'm going to start again, get this spur wheel taken off and then crack on with trying to get this exhaust bit off. I've cut through the bolt there on the bracket or the clamp and it's just released it. It's come off easy enough, which is perfect to get the new one on. Um, I only had to take one of these rubbers off, so I'm going to have a look under the car now and make sure that another bracket hasn't uh, rusted off. That's the cut bolt and this is probably the best thing I've ever bought in my life. I use it so much for so many different things. Um, just always make sure you wear safety goggles when you're using one. But that thing's an absolute lifesaver. So we're back under the car now, getting a little bit crusty around these areas. It's only surface rust, that's a bit worse like, but uh, there's two exhaust clamp uh, brackets up there, so there's not one missing. But now that exhaust is off, I can just roll back a little bit. You can see it's giving me access now better to the beam. I'm still going to have to loop it over there. I might have to give one of the lads from one of the other units a shout to help me put it in. But we'll see how we get on. The next job for me is to take the drums off. I'm then going to take some pictures of how the brakes are set up. Because I've got new uh, brake shoes. I've got new wheel cylinders. So I don't have to worry too much about taking them off. But I do require the hubs. So I don't know whether you have to take the all that off to get the hub off. I'm not too bothered. I'll strip it all down anyway. They need to come off. Because this... Um, unit needs to go back um, bare like the one that they sent or oh, maybe they don't want no bits left on it so I'm going to get drums off both sides have a look at the brake part, uh, the brake shoes and stuff and then go from there first thing to take off because this torque's 30 knot and then Best to put a mask on at this point, release the um, brake drum off, and then we can give it a clean up. I can't even get that to move. Um, there is only one nut in. I 
I think I was just being a bit too polite with it. Shoes don't look in too bad a condition. Cylinders don't look like they're leaking either. But it's break spray time now. That's all the dust cleaned up, really important job that. Picture time now, and then I'm going to start stripping all the springs off, taking out the securing lugs, and get the brake shoes off. Um, I can leave the cylinder where it is, but that's the next step. I've managed to get the brake um, shoes off. I've put them on the bench here, all built up. Um, so I know how they go when I put the new ones on. This just connects to the um, adjuster. First problem that I've come to now is let's see if I can show you um, the nut on the brake pipe is just rounding off so I'm gonna have to try and get that now with the mole grips fingers crossed I can get it to come off um, if not I'm gonna have to get this pipe that runs to the I've took plenty of pictures again of how the brake pipe runs, the ABS sensor and the handbrake. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can get this off now with the mole grips. Right guys, it's job stopped again. I'm going to have to order some of these brake pipes if I can get them. Um, it's just one of them things. These are the problems you're going to come up against if you're doing the rear axle on one of these 14, 15 year old cars. I tried my hardest to get that off. I'm just going to end up damaging more stuff, which I don't want to do. So it's a case of building this car back up again and uh, coming back to it when I get some brake pipes. That's a lovely new exhaust on with the lovely um, clip. I've put the, some copper slip on that. Hopefully I can get it back off when I come to do the brake pipes and get this axle finally done. It's all in place, it's rock solid. So at least we've got something to achieve today. But back home now, get them rear brake pipes ordered and then we can get on with our lives. It's literally been about two months now since the last clip you saw of me building the car back up and putting the exhaust back on. I've got a new centre section for the exhaust there and obviously I've got the new rear brake pipes and then in the box over here I've got the rear brake shoes and wheel cylinders I'm going to get this car jacked back up now and get it to the point where we were at in the last video. You can see the, excuse the knees, how bad that rear axle is now on the near side. It's pretty much the same on the off side as well, but with it having some weight, I've literally had all this stuff you can see here, all piled in the back of this car. So if anything, we're going to make the rear axle finally give way. It was that, which I think it finally has now. Well, I want to get this car back on the road as soon as possible. I've been doing quite a few road trips, picking up wheels, picking up wheels for the Focus RS here. And I don't like putting them in back of the Fiesta. This is just ideal for it. So let's get the car jacked back up now and back to that stage where we're ready to start taking brake pipes off. We're pretty much at the same stage we were at last time before I built it back up now. I've took the spur wheel carrier off. You're supposed to take the shockers off before you jack the car up really, but them bolts look like they're gonna be a nightmare to get off. So I'm gonna do that when the rear axle's actually off the car. Next step is gonna be disconnecting everything from both rear wheels. As you can see, I've literally gunked everything with WD-40, like penetrating fluid, and just letting that soak for a bit. As I told you in the last one, well, a few clips last time, 
that bracket's brought down there. The new exhaust doesn't actually come with that bracket. Um, it's not there. When I bolted it all back up last time, it was rock solid, so it, it might not be needed. But the problem is, if there's an exhaust bracket snaps, I do think they'll report it on the MOT. So I'm just going to put a new middle section on the car for what it costs. I think it's about £40. Pound. I'll put all the bits and stuff that I've used in this video, as always, in the link down below with links to them on eBay where I got it all from. So, yeah, next step is just disconnect everything that's going to get in the way, and then we can get on with dropping this rear axle hopefully so i've took plenty of pictures of everything that we need to do we've got the brake pipe there which goes to a flexi pipe underneath which is hard to show you uh, yeah you can just about make it out there i'm going to disconnect it at that point there um, just underneath and then we can move them out of the way that's the brake pipes off that there is the ABS sensor which runs underneath and clips into this rubber bracket and then we've got the handbrake cable to do both sides as well and then I think we're pretty much straight there to drop that axle down and get the bolts out that's the rear brake drums off I'm going to take them outside now and give them a wire brush off and get them sprayed up it'd be stupid not to make them look pretty again while you're doing this job it only take about 20 minutes and it can dry while I'm cracking everything else off that's both drums, all sanded down with a well wire brushed. Got them up as clean as I can. I'm just going to hit them now with some VHT black paint because it's what I've got lying about and leave them outside to dry in the sun. That's two coats of that VHT paint. They've come up well better than they looked, so I'm going to leave these out in the sun now to dry and crack on with a rear axle. I've got everything stripped down on the car now. I'm going to have to get some new dust covers that go over the hub nut. But we've got the handbrake cable taken out. I've disconnected the ABS sensors underneath. I'll show you that in a second. And I've targeted that part of the brake pipe there. And I'll show you that when we get underneath in a second. So pretty much this axle's free to come off now. Ideally, I wanted to take this off today and clean all the back plate up. But I can't. I've not got a socket that's big enough for that i think it's a 36 or a 38 mil so i'm just going to drop it as it is and at least then the old axle's off and i can start having a look at what needs swapping over i'll take you underneath now and show you what's going on underneath there so i've disconnected the sensors where they connect so i can just get my fat body under here which is here sorry they clip into the multi plugs underneath i've just took them off these clips uh, just so they're out of the way and then I've just threaded them back. I've took lots of pictures and I've just hung them up over here so they're out of the way when I drop the axle. Because these nuts aren't for coming off. I'd rather try and do that when it was off the car and I have a little bit better access. I've used Crack It, a freezing spray to crack the um, brake pipe unions off. But yeah, I think we're pretty much ready now to to start dropping this axle. We've got the Torx bits that go underneath here. And then we've got the nuts, which are here. There's two at the front. And then if I can show you underneath here, you've got a Torx bit. I don't know if the camera's gonna let you. Once we get this axle dropped off in a minute, we're gonna then get the wire brush out, get all underneath wire brushed off and get it under sealed this part. It's not too bad at all. Uh, there's just a few little bits that I'm going to treat with a bit of rust and then get it under sealed as well I may as well while all this axle's off and there's no rush to get it done and make it all a bit more future proof under here but yeah let's get the axle dropped and go from there the 19 milli nuts that I showed you at the front of the axle that needed taking off they weren't that them are the nuts that hold the bracket on which is basically just another four Torx 50s which you can see the um i've no doubt maybe that you have to swap these brackets over these top ones definitely need swapping over these bolts look like they, these bolts look like they're going to be a pain but i'm going to have to get them soaked and try my best to get them off so at least that's the old axle off i'm going to call it a day there um, i'm going to order some new shock absorbers nuts and bolts i think it'd be stupid not to um, I'm going to get underneath now and show you what it looks like now the axle's off 
and uh, show you what little bits I've got to get the wire brush on and treat. There's the car without the axle on, so we'll go underneath, have a closer look. Got a little bit of crustiness there. All this is just surfaced. That's a little bit deeper, but that can be treated too. But apart from that, little bit there on that bracket, just spin round towards the back. Just little bits really. The, I'd say 90% of it is rock solid. I don't want to go too hard on it. It looks like it's got some factory under seal on it anyway. I just plugged them brake pipes with a bleed nipple rubber. Just stop them dripping everywhere. But yeah, all in all, considering how old this car is, that's absolutely nothingness compared to that six inch saxo. Uh, that was an absolute rotter. So I'm just going to wire wool, wire brush, should I say, these rough bits, get some crust on them and get it painted up. Um, yeah, it looks spot on when it's done. Anywhere where there are a little bit of surface rust or any little bubbles, I've wire brushed it down to bare metal or as clean as I can get it. And then I've put rust converter on everything. Um, it looks a lot worse than it is. I just thought I might as well treat it while I've got the axle off because it'll be covered going forward. I don't know whether I'm going to just put some um, like hammerite under sealer on it. I've got a few cans of that, I think. So I might get that sprayed on next because I've got to order a few bits for the axle now, like the dust caps and also get a socket so I can take the wheel bearings while the hub's off. I'll just come underneath here and show you what I've done on the inside. So we've got it all rust treated underneath here as well. I'm gonna have to get some cavity wax for inside there, which isn't a problem because I can get to that. But yeah, I think I'm going to clean this wheel carrier off as well and give that a spray up tomorrow. But that's it for today. I'm calling it a day. Get these bits ordered and then we can crack on from there. It's the next day now. I've got my 36mm socket from Holford's. I know people moan saying Holford's is really expensive, but were well, you going to be able to go and pick one of these up on the day? Um, I've also got this, which I've had in for ages. Um, some underbody sealer. I'm going to be doing that today. I've been soaking these bolts with WD-40. I pray they come off. I've got to swap this bracket over and also this one, I think. Um, we've got all these clips pipes to swap over as well, which shouldn't be an issue. Um, same on this side. That's that Torx 50 where you have to go through. This mountain needs to come off. And then we can get underneath now. I've wire brushed all underneath the car. Um, I just need to give it a wipe down and I can spray it. I'll take you under there now and show you what it looks like now all the rust converter's gone off. So where it stayed pretty purple is where there's not actually any rust. And then you can see where it's gone like a deeper black. Like up there is where there was the surface rust. Um, that's how it's converted. Um, same with like up there. So I'm going to get it taped off now and wiped down and just give this, the floor section and this beam here, a spray off and these as well. Not going for anything major, just want to make sure it's protected and doesn't rust for another 15 years. I'm just going to slide myself under. So it's all clean underneath here all keyed up or whatever you want to call it back here is like brand new so i'm not going to spray this section i'm just going to focus on this beam backwards because there's nothing wrong apart from this middle bit here so i've taped off where the little holes are because that's where it contacts anyway and i'm gonna get the under sealer sprayed on now i'm gonna take this bottom edge of the bumper off as well and get it done and then that can be drying while I start working on swapping everything over on the axles. That's underneath, all under sealed on the inner edge as well. 
got a good thick coating on it i've just gone over that bit over there and that little dot as well um no need to do that full back section it's rock solid and under sealed as well it's just this bit underneath the spur wheel that wasn't i'm going to spin round show you what's going on under here so it's all under sealed now hopefully many many more years this car will be on the road i'm going to leave this now probably overnight and allow it to cure but next let's get onto that rear axle i've got the old axle here now while the under seal is drying off i've absolutely soaked these wire brushed them off and used this stuff which hasn't let me down yet it freezes um, the bolts if you've never used it before allows them to contract a little bit and then allows the penetrating fluid to go in i've managed to crack each one of these off because these back bolts are encased in this mount um, i'm gonna start swapping everything over now onto the new axle and i'm also going to spray up the spur wheel cradle as well so we're going to start with swapping all mounts over and then we can start working on the hubs, the bearings should I say, and also sensors and brake pipes. So I've swapped over both body mounts now and torqued the bolts up. This is going to be a bit weird when I get to it because there's not actually a lug that secures that in place. So it, it can actually be tightened up any place but we've obviously got to line it up with the screws. And I don't know if you can get a spanner on top of this when it comes to actually putting it in. So I might have to try and line it up and drop it again a little bit down so I can undo, undo this bolt and align that bracket up so it fits with the holes on the body mountings. We'll just have to deal with that when we get to it. But that's the body mount swapped over now on both sides. And I'm going to start working on the brake lines now, getting them swapped over. Right, these brackets clip on here for the flexi brake pipe and this one down here as well the 230 milli nuts obviously the brackets are quite corroded and stuff i've just had to really take my time with these working them on working them back off wd-40 more crack it and they finally come off so i'm just going to snip this pipe because it's um corroded in any way and i'm going to take it off from underneath there in the vice in a minute but yeah just take your time with these you have to swap the whole bracket over they don't come on the new axle so you'd be gutted if you ended up snapping one that's all the brake pipes switched over if you remember earlier this one here that connects it to the rest of the car is still on it i've done both sides i've just sprayed some lithium grease whatever you want to call it on them nuts should they ever need to be taken off again i've left these brake pipes loose at the moment because i want to make sure i can get everything off and the cylinders lined up and stuff before i tighten them all up i have to know it here to check all brake pipes are tight before i put this axle on i've noticed one thing in here i don't know whether there's supposed to be like a rubber bushing or something behind these nuts. I'll find out when I whip these nuts and bolts off. I was struggling to find new ones, which is a shame. I'm going to have another look tonight. I'd ideally like to put new ones on with new locking nuts, but I just have to do whatever I can to get this car back on the road. New shockers have been ordered, but yeah, I think there might be a bush inside there, or at least a like a washer or something. So I'm going to carry on now and start taking the hubs off i've got a hub uh, like a bearing splitter that's going to take this off for me so that's the next job and get these back plates cleaned off and swapped over unfortunately taking these hubs off has now become job stopped i got a 36 mil socket from um alford's and it's not big enough so it's either a 38 or a 40 i'm going to measure it now rather than uh, look online again it's not a problem, I can start working on these shock absorber bolts and see what's going on with them. But after that, um, if I go and pick the right socket up tomorrow, we can start getting this axle back on and the underseal should be dry. 
So I'm going to work on these bolts now and see how I get on with them. I've just realised there's two more brackets that need swapping over. Um, I think the ABS sensor clips into it up here. Um, they're not in the best condition, but there's a little clip on the back as well, which I think the wire clips into. So I'm going to need to swap them two over. Unfortunately, I've run out of this stuff and I know if I don't use it, I'm never going to get that nut up, that bolt out. Um, all shocker um, bolts and nuts have been taken off and swapped over bar one where the collar is actually seized into the nut. And when I've took them top nuts and bolts off, there's no rubber inside or anything. That just literally slots in as it is. So... We're going to have to get some more bits ordered tonight, like the 38 or 40 mil socket. Um, and then hopefully tomorrow I can get this finished and put on. The shock absorbers should be here soon as well, but I don't need them to be here to finish putting this on. You're supposed to put them on last when the car's on all fours again, put some weight in the boot and get the holes lined up for the shock absorbers. But yeah, another good day today. Felt like a bit of a slow day, but plenty done. First time I've ever done one. So let's hope these parts are available and I can get me a quick. Another day now on the rear axle. I've got everything swapped over by the rear hubs and back plates because I need a 40 mil socket. I've not been able to get one overnight or today I'm gonna to have to order one. I'm gonna get this axle put in now. What I've done, in the other clips I was telling you that I was worried about this not having any movement so I'm going to slacken these off and then start these off and get them into position and then tighten this off hopefully before it's bolted up I'll have enough movement sorry enough clearance to get a spanner in on top of that tighten that bolt up and then I can gun these ones down so wish me luck there's just me and a jack I'm going to get this um, back in now I've had to swap these brackets over as well off that quite badly corroded these nothing i can do about it um, no point trying to treat them or anything they're a bit too far gone they're only holding the abs sensor in anyway i uh, just have to be careful with that when i put them back on but yeah wish me luck this is where we're at i've managed to get these let me roll in I managed to get the top the back mounts in should i say just a couple of turns and then i've chopped the front of the axle up on these tyres, this is probably my fifth attempt to doing it. Just keep slipping off this little rubbish jack. I need to invest in a proper jack that goes higher. But I'm going to get some wood underneath that now, jack it up and get them front mounts on. And then it's job done. That's one new axle on the Berlingo, all installed, all lined up. I uh, managed to get it in on my own. It was a little bit tricky, took a bit of thinking and stuff. But we'll just nip underneath now and I'll show you what it's all like under there. So we've got all the mounts in place, all lined up, all perfectly gone in. Um, I had to use them wheels to get it up to a certain height. My jack won't go high enough and I had to, had to put wood on the jack. But it's turned out an absolute mint job that. Um, it's job stopped there for today. Just going to wait for that 40mm socket to arrive, the shock absorbers and the new oven nuts and stuff and then I can crack on and finally get it finished. Um, it's a shame I couldn't get new brackets and stuff that hold the axle to the body but I just have to do whatever I've got to do like I keep saying to get this car back on the road. I've uh, got the brake shoes to put on, hub bearings to change over in the next couple of days when this socket arrives but yeah happy with that for today i'm going to get cleaned up now because the unit is an absolute mess i've got tools and stuff everywhere give it a sweep up and roll on getting this car back down on four wheels i'm still waiting for the 40 mil socket to come so i can do this all the hubs in the meantime i've been thinking that why go all this way with sorting all the axle out and stuff and under sealing underneath if we're not gonna do something with these because they just look horrendous so i'm going to be taking these off again and if you can see under there i've ordered a flexi holes as well which i'll show you in a minute i've ordered one for each side so i'm going to try and work them out of them brackets as well 
rust treat these brackets and get them sprayed up in like a gloss black just while I'm waiting really. Um, like I say, these are all the fun bits. I don't know why people rush and try and just get it all slapped all back together when there is no rush. So I'm going to be taking them off today. I managed to get a new bolt as well for the shock absorber because the collar was stuck on the other one. But that's today's job. Just get these brackets off, get them on the bench and just um, start making them look pretty again. These are pretty fragile. I can't go mental with them. It's the ABS um, sensor brackets. It's a little plastic clip behind here and there's a metal bit up there that it slots into. So let's have a better look at them when they're on the bench and we can go from there. So this is the flexi pipe that I've ordered new ones of. This just puts clips in under pressure, um, like forces its way in. And we've got a clip underneath here that we're going to have to try and get off. Shouldn't be too hard. It's just, like I say, they're a bit brittle, these brackets and stuff. So I'll have to take my time with them. But I'm not bothered. Um, it'll definitely be worth doing and just stop them from rusting any further. I'm going to whip the near side off as well now and then start working on these pipes. I've managed to separate the flexi pipes from both sides. I've hammered these a bit more straight as, as the chassis failed. It's actually bent these on the arm uh, where it kinks out. They've come up pretty well. I'm happy with that. So next job is to get the crust on them and get the rust converted and then we can get them sprayed tomorrow. That's all the parts now, rust converted. I don't know if you can see on this one here, I should have degreased these really after using the penetration fluid um, to get them pipes out as it's reacting a little bit on the surface. But I'll see how they look tomorrow and if need be, I'll just give them another coat, give them a clean off, a degrease and do them again. I'm not bothered how long this takes now because it's taken forever anyway. Underneath the car, I've undersealed that back section as well give it a good clean up again it didn't need doing the under seal was perfectly fine that was in place but i've just give it one coat and then i'm going to give it another coat now and then it should uh, be like brand new it just looks a bit daft not being done i may as well do it while i'm under here um, and i've just done the top lip of that back beam there but hopefully in the next couple of days now the 20 the 40 mil socket's going to arrive and then we can get this job finished another day um, the rust converter has done its job, worked its magic, it's all gone black and now it's dry. Um, the new flexi hoses have come, got from Parts in Motion. Um, been getting quite a few things from them. Got an eBay store, postage comes really quick and they're pretty much identical in length as well, even though they said they were a little bit longer on eBay, but yeah, they're spot on. And the 40mm sockets come as well, so... I'm going to see how I get on today. I'm just going to focus on spraying these because I'm pretty tired and um, a little bit groggy today. So I'm just going to focus on some fun jobs, which will be spraying these up, getting the heat gun out and getting them dried off. And then we can build these pipes back up and get them back on the car and see how I'm feeling after I've had my lunch. And I might start taking the rear hubs off and swapping all that stuff over. Uh, three quarts of primer on each one of them just to give it some good coverage and now we're going to go on with the famous Holford's gloss black and get these done using heat gun just to heat the metal up a little bit and dry them off quicker so I ain't stood here for hours but there's nothing better than spraying all the little bits and making it look perfect I couldn't have ever left them as they were they looked horrendous you look through the wheel arch down there and everything looks shiny new all under sealed and stuff and then you've got these rusty ass brackets so I'm going to get on with gloss black now and get them finished. That's two coats of Holford's gloss black. They've come up really well. I know you can still see like the pitting from the um, surface corrosion that happened on them. But yeah, they look a million times better. I'm just going to let them go off on their own now. I'm going to drag the rear axle around here and start stripping down the rear hubs. So I've got to knock this... Um, indent on the hub nut and get the 40 mil nut on and take it off the socket should I say and take it off and then I'm going to use a three leg puller to pull these off hopefully they come off in one piece um, I'm praying they come off in one piece else I'm going to have to get some new ones uh, there was no play in these which a lot of people said they might have been but there wasn't 
so I can get them off move them to the side and then we can get these back plates off and obviously I'm going to give them a clean up as well and spray them so they look nice on the new rear axle I've got them rear hubs off now got them both off without damaging them they came off pretty easy with the gun and the bearing puller so next job is to get these back plates off get this ABS um, screw out on the bench bolt whatever you want to call it get the old wheel cylinders off get them all cleaned up and sprayed and then that axle is ready to be sent back to I am axles because they've run me up asking where it is because I've had it for about 18 years and it is a replacement unit and you have to send your old one back so I'm gonna get these allen key bolts taken out now get these back plates removed and start working on them fingers crossed we can get everything pretty much built back up on there today I've got the back plates off I didn't realize that the ABS sensor fits to the actual um, axle and not onto the back plate so I'm going to flip this over in a second and start working on these nuts on the back they are quite rusted might have to get some new ones not too fussed about having to buy some new sensors if I can't get them out um, like I keep saying I've come this far with it now for the sake of another 40 50 quid if I'm doing it I'd rather do it right than be messing things up going to get all this brake cleaned off now and degreased wire brush on both sides get these wheel cylinders off and then I can get them painted up and I think that'll be pretty much it for today and then tomorrow the fun begins and I can start putting everything back together I get the manual down and work out what all these torque settings are for all these bolts uh, get some Loctite put back on them and stuff and go from there Hopefully when these bearings go back on, there um, there's no playing them or anything. If there is, again, I'm not bothered. I'll just order some new ones. But they seemed all right when they're on the car. There was no noise from them, no playing them or anything. And they came off easy enough when I just took them off with a the puller then. So let's start cleaning these up and working on these ABS sensors. That's the back plates all wire brushed, degreased and ready to be um, rust converted going to get a heat gun on that and dry that off a little bit more and then I can leave them overnight then and crack on with this job in the morning I've just quickly nipped up to the unit today to get the rust treatment done on the other side of the rear back plates and to get the ABS sensors out these are a little hex bolt um, I had to bang a torx in though because they were that corroded hopefully there's no damage to these I've noticed that the clip snapped a little bit here, so I'll have to be careful with that when it goes back together. Hopefully it does go back together and I don't get an ABS light on, but they're easy enough to change on these. So as that axle stands there, the old one, that's fully stripped now and can be bubble wrapped up and I'll get iron axles to come and collect it and then get it out of the way and then they can refurbish it and it goes to the next person. I sprayed these up, um, rust treated them, primed them and all that. They're not looking amazing, but they look 10 times better than they do. They'll last a lot longer as well. If I could have bought these brand new again, I would have, but it's a bit different now with car parts. I think Peugeot and Citroen on the cars for 11 years making parts, and then after that, they just stopped making them. Um, so unless someone's got some in stock and never used them, you're not going to get them. But I couldn't find any, so I've just done what I've needed to do with these. I've got the new little hex head bolts for the ABS sensors. So I can basically crack on with this now and start getting it all built up. So the first job I'm going to do today is get the um, back plate put back on, get the nuts put in with some, the bolts put in, should I say, with the, some Loctite on them, get them torqued up, and then I'm going to move on to putting them brackets back on up here and putting the new flexi pipes on and just getting the brake pipes connected with a wheel cylinder. So I'm going to crack on with that now and I'll check in in a minute. I've got this wheel cylinder on on this side, new brake pipes on, all the brackets are on and you can see the new flexi pipe there connected to the existing brake lines. So if I can get a better view from round here, there you go, all in and done. Only tip I'd give you is that put that clip on before you start, just work out where the natural curve of the pipe is, how it comes, which is like that. And just put it in in that position 
and then get it on the car so i'm going to do the other side now and then that's all done in terms of brake lines and pipes and stuff that's both sides done little tip for people is don't tighten anything up until you've got all the connections um, started with your fingers um, so glad I got these flexi pipes and redid all the brackets as well uh, it just makes it look a little bit better underneath fully under sealed now um, the back there needs a second coat but next is to build all the rear shoes up and then start putting the hubs on I've got the ABS sensors back in I forgot to put them in then when I'd just done all the brake lines run all the cables as they were not too sure about that bit there um, can't quite remember how it went I'm gonna have a look back on the pictures but I'm pretty much sure that's how it went it's the only way it can go um, one of the clips underneath has broke um, it's gone back together okay I'm just hoping it's not gonna throw the light on it'll be 25 quid for a new sensor but these are all talked up now um, Loctite put on them as well so before I put the hubs on I'm going to put the rear brake shoes on now um, get them on the bench and get them all the springs swapped over and stuff that's the brake shoes and wheel cylinders um, and brake cable connected both sides advice for this bit is to totally wind this adjuster off on the bench um, I've had to take this driver side back off because I didn't and then the drum wouldn't go on so I did the passenger side and wind it straight off. The drum goes off. It's really baggy. It doesn't need adjusting up. I'm going to wait till all the hubs on and stuff before I start doing that, even though the drum does go over it. So next job, now I've done both sides, is to get the hubs on both sides and then we're absolutely flying again. I've got the driver's hub on now. Um, I use the old nut to wind it down. You do have to use a drift or the socket to tap it on um, I give the axle uh, rubbed down first with some emery cloth oiled it up with some engine oil and then slowly started to tap this on and when I could see the threads I just used the old nut bolted it on and used that to push it on the rest of the way uh, it's talked up to 250 newton meters I'm just going to slacken it all back off now and put the new hub on I've had a problem with the hub on this side because the front and rear section of the bearing separate. There's like a circlip that goes inside. I've struggled like mad, but I've worked out how to do it quickly, which I'm going to show you in a second. So I'm going to crack on with the passenger side now, get it in the vise and show you what I did. So we've got the front section, the rear section, and then the actual hub with the bearings in. And you've got this circlip here, which goes inside and connects that lip there to that lip there. Um, I've tried some circlip pliers and stuff, but they're at the wrong angle. So I've managed to do it with a hook and a pick. So I'm going to set it up in the vise now and show you what I did to reconnect them two bearings before I put them on. So I've got the hub in the vise. I've got a 34mm socket in the back. If we can see inside, you can see the two lips that need to be connected with this little clip. So I'm going to pop that inside now. Um, use the pick and the hook to compress it inwards and then flick it over to them two lips which I think you can just about see where they connect there. They need to be tight together. You need them a push like, let it focus. It is a bit tricky, but you can do it. If not, you're gonna have to get some new hubs. I hope you can see that that clips now in. You can see the dots on it. It's holding them front and back sections together now. If you are struggling with this or you break it, whatever, you're going to get new hubs. Um, I wish I'd probably ordered new hubs for it, but I'll see how these get on. If they pick up on an MOT, I'll just get some new ones. But yeah, that's that clip back on now, so I can slowly start working it back onto the axle on the other side. That's both hubs on now with the new hub nuts, 250 newton meters. I think this one's going to need replacing. Um, it just sounds a bit noisy in there and it's the one that I had to mess around with the most when I worked out what was happening with that clip inside it spins a lot more freely than the other side so we'll just have to see how it sounds when I put the wheels back on if I have to get new hubs I'm not bothered uh, but at this point it's just get this car built back up it's an easy job to replace the hubs I know what I'm doing now um, but now I just want to crack on 
and get the um, the car back on the ground. I'm going to put the rear drums back on now and then carry on going from there. I've got both rear drums on each side. Like I say, that is super tight on that side. Just have to see how we get on with it. Um, I'm going to now put the wheels back on, get it lowered down, and then start putting the shock absorbers on. The Blingo is finally on the ground. Looks like it's sitting very high. I've got to put the shock absorbers on next. I have to do that by weighting the boot down. It's 260 mil between the centers on the studs. So I'm just going to get some weight in the back now until it becomes about 260 mil. And then I can put these new shock absorbers on and it's pretty much done apart from bleeding the brakes and adjusting the brake shoes. That's the new shock absorbers on as well. Um, it didn't take any weight really, they just went on. So basically that's now a fully restored Citroen Berlingo multi-space underneath. I didn't realise it would turn into this, but there's no point just doing it half-heartedly. All I've got left to do now is bleed the brakes up, put the um, adjust the rear shoes, and then put the exhaust back on the spur wheel carrier, put the spur wheel back in, and it's job done. So I'm just going to leave it there for today, and... Uh, get the rest done tomorrow i've bled all the brakes up um, double check for leaks and stuff there is none so i'm going to crack on now with adjusting the rear brake shoes um i'm going to adjust the take the nut off at the handbrake and also start to work the adjuster um, just so there's a little bit of drag on each side i'm still going to take this car and have the brakes um uh, bled properly i just always like doing that i just think it's worth doing it you shouldn't really um mess around with your brakes i know you can bleed them yourselves but i'll always rather make sure it's done properly by taking it to a garage and getting them to do it with the correct equipment so i'm going to get that done now and then that's pretty much it done on the brakes and then i can start putting the new exhaust pipe on the car's finally on all fours it's now time to spin it round and get this middle section of the exhaust taken off and get the new one put on and get it coupled back up to that new back box we've got the old middle section off now um, it's got to swap these brackets over onto this one the exhaust is pretty much exactly the same bar it's not got this bracket that's snapped off it's not fun doing stuff like this on the floor but what can you do unless you get a ramp so I'm gonna get the new clamps in place get this middle section on now and get the back box put on I've got a bit of a problem with the brakes where I've not got a brake pedal I don't know if it's because I've not adjusted the rear shoes properly I'm gonna have to deal with that there's literally no brakes at the moment now the cars back down on the floor and um, so once I get this exhaust section built back up I can start focusing on them rear wheels again I don't think it's adjusting um, the automatic adjusters felt like they were pretty free, but they're clearly not. Um, and brakes very high, click-wise. So um, we're going to have to have a look at that in a minute. But I'm going to get this new exhaust on now, bolted up to the new rear section, which is down there. And then at least underneath it's done. Get some air in this spur tyre as well. And then we're pretty much done in terms of rear axle and stuff apart from that brake issue there you go the Belingo's back on the road i've not managed to get a brake pedal i'm going to take it round to the garage now and get and bleed it up see if they can get it to do it better than i have i hope it's nothing more than air in the system well that's basically a full rear end restore on the Belingo multi-space it looks absolutely mint i've made up with it and we're going to have many many more years in it now so yeah perfect I've just got back from having the brakes bled, the pedal's rock solid now, with the amount of air that come out when it was being done, I would have had no chance of doing it manually, I did try and I failed, but yeah, the pedal's absolutely spot on now, ABS light has come back on, I've noticed I've got the ABS sensors on the wrong side, which is just ridiculous, because 
they're actually colour coded one's grey one's white and so are the multi plugs um, I don't know how I've messed that up I'm going to blame it on low lighting in the unit um, one of the longest videos I've ever done this but as you can tell if you've made it this far you deserve a medal if you have um, it's quite an in-depth thing that I've done on the back of the Bolingo. Um, the next step for this car is to get it through its MOT so I can start using it again. I'll probably end up using it more than the Fiesta because I absolutely love it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, any comments, put in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like button and uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Um, again, thanks if you have made it to the end of the video. I know it's a long one, but um, I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.